Growing public interest technology will happen on multiple fronts. Education, research, practice, and outreach to the general public. The things we do in all these areas are building blocks that help public interest technology provide a positive impact and grow it as a field. We have a special role to play at colleges and universities in all of this. The courses we teach can help prepare students to be better citizens, professionals, public servants, and leaders. Understanding that your connected baby monitor can be hacked or how facial recognition can be biased helps create more informed professionals and better citizens and people with the agency to make changes that need to be made. T-shaped research, research that we do at the university that combines social responsibility and domain research, um, will help us really understand what the technological tools can do. For example, work on differential privacy has helped navigate the really tricky interface of privacy and accuracy in the U.S. Census. In terms of the practica, fellowships and internships and different capstone projects we do with the students, these can introduce students to the fact that the world is not always purely merit-based that it's socially messy, that there are economic lenses, uh, environmental lenses, social lenses, and all of those things get involved in decisions that they'll have to make. This gives them practice with that. And in terms of the general public, the kinds of things we do with our communities will be really important. Knowledge about what net neutrality means, or what data privacy means, or how cybersecurity affects them in terms of uh, the digital assistance they buy or the different appliances they buy. All of those things are important and all of those things provide building blocks for public interest tech. There's general agreement that technology should promote public safety, privacy, and other public interests. What work we should do and how we should do it is another issue. That's reflected in public interest technology. The field's in a bit of a Wild West stage right now, where anything goes, and it should be. As a field, public interest technology is in its infancy. Its trajectory forward may be similar to public interest law or data science, which started quite similarly to public interest technology. Both grew in substance and maturity and curriculum and research over many years and now thrive in all sectors. Consider data science. Roughly 20 years ago, uh, a lot of people did uh, use data as part of the work that they did professionally and learned about data in school but we didn't really have uh, quite the number of data concentrations, majors, journals, conferences. Many people use data, but they didn't really think about themselves as data scientists. Today, there are all kinds of data courses and data science majors and journals and uh, data scientists uh, who are professional. 10 years ago, Harvard Business Review said that data scientist is the sexiest job in the 21st century. It's been on a trajectory to make it really a field. And I think the same thing will happen with public interest technology. All of the flowers that we're planting right now, all of the different programs and courses uh, and thoughts people are having um, will mature. And over time, I think there will be university concentrations, majors, minors, etc. There's not so much consensus now on what that right thing is, but we're still in the early stages and we're on the right track. Interdisciplinary courses are key because public interest technology is all about embodying technology in the real world. We need to understand the, both the technologies we use and their social implications, e economic and environmental consequences. Public interest technology in the wild must merge private and public interests. The hardest thing about creating interdisciplinary courses is not the interest of the faculty in teaching them or the hunger of the students for taking courses like this. It's really fitting such courses in the university structures, which are often parochial. 
faculty teaching generally supports departmental curricula and their research efforts. Students need to take courses that satisfy the requirements of their major. If public interest technology is off to the side, it's much harder for faculty and students to spend the time on it that they would like to and the time on it that we need. At my previous institution, RPI, uh, I taught a course called Data and Society. It was a great course and it expanded a variety of topical tech uh, issues and their influence on society. We looked at facial recognition and data privacy, digital rights, cybersecurity, etc. It was a communication intensive elective and because of that students could take that as part of their major and part of the things that they needed to do and it was possible for me to teach it every single year. Um, it was in, embedded in the system and that was really important. At University of Massachusetts Amherst, we have the opportunity to do that throughout the university, to do that in every college uh, that has interest in a socially responsible lens and a technological lens for the work that they do. We have an opportunity to create concentrations and credentials and various courses that are interdisciplinary and that they that span all of these different problems. We have an opportunity for students to take these as part of their majors and their minors and their interests. That to me is tremendously exciting and that to me is the way that public interest technology will really benefit the academic environment, the students, the faculty, and the world at large. So I'm tremendously excited about doing that here and in a really deep and substantive way. Public interest tech clinics and practica, internships, fellowships, cross-sector projects, etc., are critical to familiarize students with the socially messy, real-world political and economic environments in which decisions about tech often get made. We learn in school how to make merit-based decisions, how to do analysis, but in practice it's sometimes really challenging. We don't always have the information. Organizational pri uh, priorities differ. It's someone else's turn. It's too expensive. It takes too much time to do the right thing. Pit clinics and practica give students a safe way to experience the messiness and competing priorities of the real world and a way to build skills for dealing with it. This experience helps them be better professionals, better leaders, better public servants, and it can be a really important part of the education and training they get in academic settings. In the short term, I'd love to see more volume in, pu in the public interest tech world. More participating institutions in the Pitt University network, more programs, more students taking these programs, more faculty with research in the area, more funding, more internships, more fellowships, more practica, more outreach, uh, more of all of this. And all of this experience will help the field grow and give us different ways of doing these things. In the medium term, it would be great to see Pitt grow as a field with many options for concentrations and majors, certificates, conferences and journals that start to embed it as a more foundational part of the academic enterprise, just like data science and public interest law is today. In the long term, it would be great to see real Pitt professional options for people, for public interest technologists. Imagine being in the private sector as a chief public interest technology officer. Uh, imagine Congress and other government agencies having analogs of the Office of Technology Assessment. Imagine a pit concentration or pit minors or majors in the university or being hired as a public interest technology uh, individual faculty member in the university. I think those kinds of job trajectories and embedding them in all of the sectors and all of the things we do will really help us focus on the goal of Pitt in the first place, which is to make the digitally empowered world a world that is really empowering for us and a world that we can control our technology rather than having our technology control us.